Well, let's uh, begin the class. So the last time we talked about the case study of uh, China, and we just discussed the first part. So you should make a page like this, right? Use a page. Just you need to write three things on the page. The problem is the first one, right? The relevant data is the second one. Okay, and then we have the analysis and action plan. So you need to give me this kind of page, problem, relevant data, analysis and action plan. Okay? So we have that kind of thing from the on the worksheet. Okay? So just like the last time on the case study of the US. You gave me that kind of thing. So now for the case of your data. So just make a page like this. Write those three things on the page. Leave some space. Okay, and then the last time we discussed what the problem was from the introduction and conclusion. So let's just write the problem. Okay, if, you're, if it's wrong, it's okay. You can change it later. So you can write in pencil or write in the can just change a little bit later. But have a guess about what the problem is. Problem or issue. We can also say issue. What's the main issue of this case? Can you close the door at the back of the room, please? What do you think is the problem? You were absent in the last class. Uh, e on G. Yes. What is the problem? What was the problem? People have different opinion, right? So the undervaluation of the Rem and B, we can write down R and B. Okay? So we have the US says it's undervalued. Okay? So China says it's not undervalued, right? China increase. <coughs> So the US says the RMB is undervalued and China disagrees. So we had some questions also that we, had, we saw in the conclusion. Okay. So first question, is the under, RMB undervalued? Okay. If, China, if it's undervalued and China revalues its currency, what is the effect on its trade partners? Should the reform be gradual or quickly? Okay. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the floating exchange rate and the managed floating? So what should China's exchange rate policy be? So if we look at all of those questions, we're thinking the problem, should China, or how should China change? Should China change?
how, right? How should they change? What will what will happen? What will happen? So these are kind of questions which are asked in the conclusion, which is connected to the problem. Okay. <coughs> So China changed its currency regime from managed floating to floating. How should it change? Slowly or quickly? Or how could it do that? What would happen? If it changes and makes its currency stronger, what's going to happen in the world? Okay? So these are the kind of issues. So it's important first to read the conclusion, read the introduction, to understand the problem or the issues so we can know which information is relevant when we're doing the case, going through the case, and which information is not relevant. Okay? So the last class we read the introduction, we said we would skip the brief history of the RMB. And we started here. We gave I gave some tasks to the students. So what we're going to do now is just uh, work through the case. And uh, write down the important data which is relevant to the issue. <coughs> then after we write down the important data relevant to the issue, we are going to uh, <coughs> analyze and make an action plan about what we should do. So let's start with the first page, please. So do you need to write down everything I write on the board? As we go through the case, do you have to write down everything in relevant data? <coughs> no, what's the key word here? Relevant. Do you understand relevant? Yes. No. Relevant to what? Yes. Relevant to this issue, right? Yes. Some things may not be relevant to help us to answer the question. Okay? So let's start with the restrictions. So who wrote, who, who read that part? Put up your hand if you read that part. Restrictions. Okay, what can you tell us about this? What's the main point? So sorry, excuse me. Yes, don't leave the class in the middle of the class, okay? It's, is that an emergency? No. <laughs> oh, yes, so can you continue please? Okay, the current account has less restrictions than the capital account. So the capital account is restricted. What kind of things are in the capital account? Um, portfolio investments. Um. Okay, so portfolio investments is restricted. What are portfolio investments? Portfolio investment in the capital account. What is that? What kind of things are we talking about when we talk about portfolio investment? <coughs> stocks and? Stocks and bonds. Okay? So that's restricted. What does that mean? I cannot easily buy a stock in the Chinese stock market. Okay? Maybe I need to go to Hong Kong. Maybe the Chinese company is listed in Hong Kong. Chinese citizens, can you invest your savings in stocks in another country? Easily? No, right? So restrictions on the Chinese citizens buying stocks and bonds from abroad and restrictions on foreigners buying stocks and bonds in... Uh, okay, do you understand restriction? What does restriction mean? Controlling. So just I'm not allowed. It's not legal. Okay? I can't just go to China and start buying stocks on the Chinese stock market. They're not going to allow me, because I'm a foreigner. Okay, do you understand? Maybe I can buy some bond that's owned by the Chinese person, I can find a way around. But people can find a way around, but there's a restriction. It means it slows it down. Do you understand slowing down? <coughs> slowing down or making less, okay? Uh, but you said the current account, not so much, okay? And also the FDI. 
So the portfolio investment is restricted, but FDI not restricted. Okay, so do you understand the difference between portfolio investment and FDI? So I can't buy stocks in China, a Chinese company, but I can start my own company in China. I can build a factory. Okay? So China wants the foreign investors to come in, but not to buy the stocks and buy their currency. If people, a lot of people buy the Chinese currency, what's going to happen to the currency? Get stronger or weaker? Stronger. Stronger, right? So they're trying to control currency. Okay? But you can come and you can buy the land and the factories, okay? And you can start a company. Uh, so China is the first or second destination in the world for FDI, okay? A lot of people do FDI in China. Uh, so then the next one is the intervention of the central, central bank. So who read the absorption of foreign currencies? You understand absorption? Yes. We'll just write FX foreign currency. Okay, so how do they absorb the foreign currency? A sponge absorbs water. The water is here. You put down the sponge. The sponge absorbs the water. You understand absorb? Yes. So China <coughs> wants to absorb all the foreign currency centrally. So how do they do that? to only internal trade, foreign exchange, and then it is composed by 350, and they, they, they always monitoring their foreign exchange market. And um, if they higher than foreign exchange ratio, uh, they selling their foreign currency. So you missed something at the start, the most important part. Important part is China is only control central bank foreign exchange currency. Yes, well how? That's how it does it absorb? Uh, GFETS. Yes, but how does that work? The very first part. That's the most main point, is the second, first sentence. Usually the main point is the first sentence when you read the paragraph. If you ignore the first sentence, you might miss the first main point. What does the first sentence say? China had a number of legislation to limit the amount of foreign currency. Yeah, so read the next sentence. The next one is the most important one. After they received their revenue derived from export, companies had to immediately sell their foreign currency to designated banks or deposit it into these banks. So the foreign com the companies, when the company get the foreign exchange, what do they have to do? Companies get foreign exchange euros or dollars or pounds, okay? They sell their product and they get the dollar. Yes. Then what does the company have to do? Selling or deposit. They have to sell it to the bank or deposit in the bank, okay? Where does the bank send the money? Where does the bank send the, the foreign exchange reserves? What does it do with the bank? Okay, so it's going to be this the bank is part of, of this system the C E C F E T S okay and this is monitored by the central bank so the central bank can collect the foreign exchange that way okay yes Export companies have to give the foreign exchange to the bank. The bank gives them. What does the bank give them? When the companies sell their dollars and euros to the bank, what does the bank give them? RMB, right? 
And then the central bank in the end can collect the dollars. What is the central bank going to do with the dollars? Have a big party? Invite all their friends? Throw up the dollars in the air? Yes, we have loads of dollars. <coughs> what do they do with the dollars when they get them? Redirect. Invest where? U.S. Treasury bonds. Okay, can you understand how that's managing the currency? If they uh, use supply, they have to sell their dollars to the bank, and the bank gives them RMB, right? So the bank is increasing the supply of the RMB and making the dollars disappear, right? So the uh, we have more supply of RMB, then we have more demand for dollars. They are going to use the dollar to buy the US government bond. So dollar will get stronger and RMB will get weaker. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's just explaining how they absorb. They have that kind of legislation. So then who read the accumulation of foreign reserves? <coughs> accumulation of foreign reserves, yes. What's the main point? <laughs> what is the PBOC? It's the central bank in China, right? People's Bank of China. So they get the most dollars. What do they do? Re reinvest. Invest again in? Treasury bonds. <coughs> okay, the US government bonds, which we just mentioned. Okay? So, how, how much US bonds does the Chinese central bank have? In 2007, how much did it have? So, it has 1.2 trillion. Is that a lot of money? Do you understand trillion? Huh? Do you understand million, billion, trillion? No, you know one million. Okay? One billion, add another three zeros. One trillion, add another three zeros. Okay? So, <coughs> nowadays it's closer to two trillion. Okay? So, because they are intervening in the market to keep the RMB weak. They have to buy the dollars, increase the demand for dollars. They are accumulating. Do you understand accumulating? Accumulating a lot of foreign reserves. Then the next point is the sterilization of the RMB. Okay, so who read this part? Yes, what's the main point here? Uh, because of uh, because exchange rate of lemon B increased, yes. inflation happened. So Okay. So we have here we're we're selling. So we're increasing the supply of of Renmin B. Okay, so what's going to happen if we increase the supply of Renmin B? Inflation. Okay? Does everybody understand that problem if we increase the money supply? Right, we had talked about it to start. We have inflation problem. So to reduce inflation, PBOC had to remove remove or sterilize the excessive lemon B in the system by using various various mechanisms. Okay, so we're talking about sterilizing the R and B. We we're talking about reduce inflation. So what mechanisms does it use to reduce inflation? How does it try to control inflation? Government bonds were sold, were sold to commercial banks or tighter liquidity ratios were imposed on banks to slow down lending activities. Okay, so we're slowing down or controlling the bank's lending activities. So an example of this is they give in, in Shanghai, the property price is going up a lot, right? Inflation. Okay, everybody has the RMB, they can't invest abroad. What are they going to buy with their RMB, the companies? 
companies, they have to give their foreign reserve to the bank. The bank gives them RMB. Can they invest the RMB in another country? In the stocks or bonds in another country? Not easily, right? Maybe we can do some FDI in another country, right? But if we invest in China, what's going to happen to prices in China? Go up. So we might decide to invest in property in China, right? We talked about before, property bubbles is not very good for an economy, okay? Everybody invests in property, it's not productive. Everybody invests in real estate. So the real estate price in China, was it going up? Real estate price in China, is it high? Is it hard to afford a house, to buy a house? Especially in Shanghai and Beijing? Yes, so that one problem, okay? So how does the bank, the bank control this? They control the bank's lending activities. So in Shanghai, one person is allowed to own two properties. Do you understand that law? One person is not allowed to own more than two properties, right? If you're a foreign investor, you can only own one property in Shanghai, okay? The bank cannot lend much money to people, right? Maybe you have to have 50% cash, okay? And then the bank will give you 50% loan. Okay, in Korea, if you have just 10% or 20% of the price of the house in cash, you can get 80% loan from the bank. Okay? But in, in China, they're going to try and restrict this. Okay? Do you understand? This is controlling the credit, controlling the bank's lending activities. That's an example. So because of this increased supply of the renminbi, we have to try and control, make another way to control inflation. But inflation in China is still relatively high, okay? So next, uh, next part, uh, revaluing the RMB and abandoning the peg to the dollar. So they changed already their regime, right? So we changed from peg to managed float in 2005. So they used to have the peg regime, we saw before, right? It was exactly the same as the dollar, but they changed to the managed float. So who read this part? Yes? What can you tell us about this? Uh, actually, they changed the regime from uh, back, to, uh, back to the basket of currencies. Yes. Uh, and the uh, US dollar was the uh, dominated currency, and uh, there were many other currencies, such as uh, Korean currency, Singapore, Great Britain, Malaysia, and so on. Um, okay. So they're managing their currency against a basket of currencies. The main one is the dollar. Yes. Okay. Around 40%. US dollar is 40%, probably because China does a lot of trade with the US. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other countries, Korea, Japan, Singapore, right? Mm -hmm. So on and so on. Mm -hmm. Do you understand basket of currencies? So they're not just managing against the US dollar, but US <coughs> dollar is 40% of the basket. Okay, what else can you tell us? Uh, and there was many followers of China. Uh, they did the same, like changed their uh, foreign exchange regime, uh, such as Malaysia, South Korea, Thailand, uh, and so on. And they uh, appreciated their currency too against the dollar. So Malaysia also changed their peg, right? Mm -hmm. But the currencies of uh, countries like South Korea, Thailand, they already had the free floating or managed float one, right? They tend to follow the Chinese currency a little bit, okay? So they appreciate it against the dollar also. So when, Ch when China changed their regime from peg to managed float, it started depreciating or appreciating against the dollar? Appreciating. Appreciating, okay? So the Chinese currency appreciated, okay? Then these currencies also appreciated. And they appreciated by a total of 7%. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Next. Uh, so China changed to managed flow. They allowed their currency to appreciate slowly. Right? There is some band, it, it mentions here that 
it can change 0 0.3% each day against the dollar. Okay? So it, it can fluctuate. Do you understand fluctuate? The government will allow it to move 0.3% a day against the dollar. Okay? So the FX rate can change by this much. Before, in the pegged exchange rate, it can't change. Do you understand the difference? Now it can change, but just a very small amount every day. So then uh, the next part, the argument of the China's trade partners. Who read that part? Yes, anybody else? Just you? Should be two or three people. Three, you three guys? Yes, so who's going to tell me what's the main points here? We already know that we already said in the problem that the US thinks it's undervalued, so we don't need to write that again, right? But many other countries think that also, and economists, right? What kind of evidence does the US have? What kind of evidence do they have? What, what's, what supports their argument? You can't just say your currency is undervalued, right? We also saw here that most economists, economists said it was undervalued, right? Main, mostly economists agree it's undervalued. Okay. So the U.S. points to the trade deficit, 233 billion in 2006, right? Do you understand trade deficit with China? This is just with China. What does that mean? Can you tell me? What does it mean, U.S. trade deficit with China? Just tell me what trade deficit means. Use put exports and imports into the sentence. Make a sentence. Exports what? U.S. exports from China, U.S. imports from China. Put that into a sentence. Make a sentence. U.S. exports to China, U.S. imports from China. Can you make a sentence with those two things? Which is higher? One is higher and one is lower. Okay, so from the US, just in the, with China, they have this much more imports than exports. Okay, so the US says that's one reason your currency is undervalued. Okay? Any, any other reasons? Other evidence the US have? Can you say that again? Also, the China's inflow, China's getting the FDI, is much higher than the outflow. Okay, do people want to, 
do FDI in a country with a weak currency or a strong currency? Why? Why? I mean, why do you want to make FDI in a country with an undervalued currency? Not FDI in a country with a strong currency. If you're an exporting company, why? What's going to be cheaper? China. What's going to be cheaper when you do FDI in the country with the weak currency? Land and? Construction fee. <coughs> Construction fee, land, what else? Labor. Labor, okay? So we talked about the case of Argentina. When Argentina left the peg with the dollar, we asked the question, are countries going to do more FDI or less FDI in Argentina? What's the answer? More FDI. More FDI, why? Land just got four times cheaper, okay? Land cost four million dollars before, just cost one million dollars now. Okay, you've got a 25% reduction in the land and the factory, okay? And the cost of labor is much cheaper. So if Greece was to leave the euro tomorrow and make its own currency, would there be more or less FDI in Greece? What do you think? Am I going to buy a holiday home in Greece now or not? Am I more likely to buy a holiday home in Greece after Greece leaves the euro or before Greece leaves the euro? When is the holiday home cheaper in Greece? Greece <coughs> After Greece leaves the euro, of course, right? Holiday home will be much cheaper. Do you understand? Yes. Foreigners will buy and invest more money, okay? So another, they say that's kind of another proof. So we can see the difference in what, between 63 billion against 16 billion. So the inflow was 63 billion, and the outflow was 16 billion. Okay, so big difference. Okay, any other things? Right, the U.S. also said that the exports, China's exports, was increasing very quickly. Right. So China's exports growing 30 percent a year at that time. Okay, so this kind of evidence to say that the currency is undervalued, okay? So then, this is the US and Europe, right? Let's say, in the same, in the same boat. Then what about the newly industrialized economies, including Japan, Taiwan, South Korea? What do they think? What's their opinion about China's currency? What do they think about China's currency? Do they want China to make their currency stronger or are they happy enough? You said they have strong they have strong ties with China, right? Yes. But do they want China to make their currency stronger or not? No. Or they're happy enough with the current situation? What does it say here? What do these countries want China to do? Do they want China to make their currency stronger? Or they don't care? Or do they, it's all the same? Or do they want China to make their currency weaker? Or it doesn't matter? They want China to make their currency stronger? Where does it say that? Hmm? doesn't say that, right? So it said, it basically, they, those countries have strong links with China, but 
uh, they, they really don't mind. Okay? They explain here that uh, they can get an advantage from China's weak currency. For example, a Korean manufacturer might produce the chip for an MP3 player and then have the parts produced and assembled at a much lower cost in China. This is called the processing trade. Do you understand processing trade? Yes. So some part of the process is, of these countries is being done in China at a cheap price. Okay? They can also get the cheap raw materials from China. Okay? So then you can make the finished product in uh, Korea. Okay? So because of the processing trade, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, they don't really mind. Do you understand? Don't mind? Mm -hmm. It's okay, not a big problem. Okay? And then the other, finally, the other developing countries. So we've looked at US and Europe, we've looked at these developed Asian countries, and then the, what, the last part, other developing countries, what do they think? So what do they think? Do they want them to revalue the renminbi or not? They want, right? So they compete with China on the same products. Right? So they compete with like uh, Malaysia or Indonesia or even Russia or India, right? They compete with China on similar products. So. They want China's currency to get stronger. Then their products will be more competitive. Okay? So they want a revaluation. Revaluation means make let get stronger. Hey, do you have any questions so far about the data that we've looked at? What do you guys think? You're from Korea. What do you think? Do you want China, Korea's currency to get China's currency to get stronger? Do you think that's good for Korea or bad for Korea? This is case by case. And depends on the company, right? Yes. These days, some companies are complaining because the cost is getting higher in China, right? Yes. The labor cost and so on. So they're moving from Korean. Some Korean companies are moving from China to Vietnam or Cambodia other countries, okay? So it depends, like you said, what kind of business you're in. But if you're producing something in China, if you're depending on the low cost in China, then you want China to keep the lower uh, renminbi, right? But if you're exporting to China, you might want stronger renminbi, because then the Chinese people can afford to buy your product more easily. Okay, so it depends where you are, but the country in general is half and half. Okay? What about Russia? What do you think? Does Russia get some benefit if China makes their currency stronger? We are not such a huge hmm? competitors. <laughs> You're not that big competitors? What kind of industry do you think is similar in China and Russia? What kind of thing do you compete on? Maybe exporting timber. Sporting timber, raw materials, yeah. that kind of thing, right? But not in, pro in production or anything. Mm -hmm. Is Russia that worried about China's currency? Mm -hmm. Not so much as other countries. Okay, so then uh, next part is China's response. Who was reading this part? Yes? Uh, in this part, the main point is China as uh, a China's uh, Chinese government uh, rejected external pressure. So uh, uh, because of undervalued their currency, 
Okay, so this is a cultural thing in China. When I was in China, they told me that some international organizations, like the IMF and other organizations, they try to tell China what to do. But the cultural thing in China is Chinese people really don't like people from another country telling them what to do. Okay, they want to make their own decision, right? Like I said before, you can see in the US and China some advertisements like we're the center of the world or we're the best country in the world. So they think that they want to make their own decision. Can you understand that idea? Right? So they don't like people telling them what to do. So the international organization, when they work with China, they don't try to take a very a strong approach telling China, you need to do this, right? Instead, they try to try a different way. They try to discuss with China, ask China about their idea, okay? And let China come to the conclusion themselves, all right? It's like uh, if some wife wants to go on the holidays to the beach, but if she says to her husband, we, need, we have to go to the beach this year on holidays, her husband might say no. Right? He doesn't like his wife telling him what to do. So instead, the wife leaves some advertisement in the house for going to the beach, right? <coughs> or she watches some travel program about the beach, and she says, oh, the beach looks very nice. Then finally, the husband says, I have an idea. Let's go to the beach this year. <laughs> right? Then the wife says, oh, that's a good idea. You had a very good idea by yourself. I'll follow your idea. Do you understand? So that's the kind of tactic that the international organization try to use with China, right? They try to discuss with them and talk to them, and then in the end, if China believes they're making their own decision, but <laughs> external pressure doesn't traditionally hasn't worked well in China, okay? So, anything else here? Uh, and China, uh, they do nothing for revaluating their currency, mm -hmm. just doing uh, sur uh, the surface area. What do you mean the surface area? Uh, just looking for other countries like US or Europe and Asia. I don't understand. So first of all, does China agree that its currency is does China agree that its currency is uh, undervalued or it doesn't agree? Sorry? Does China agree with the US and most economists that its currency is undervalued? What does it say officially? Ah, officially. Mm. Does China say yes our currency is undervalued or no our currency is not undervalued? Not undervalued. Okay, so they said not significantly, right? Not or not significantly undervalued. Okay, so disagree, maybe they have their own economist, their own way of calculating, okay? What evidence do they have? What evidence does China have about that? What kind of evidence? Yes, so US gave this kind of evidence that China's currency is undervalued. What evidence did China give that its currency is not undervalued? U.S. used the trade deficit as the U.S. as the evidence. So what does China say about the trade deficit of the U.S.? Uh, China's trade. Yes. What about China's trade? Uh, was misleading. What do you mean misleading? Uh, not yes. So what's the evidence they have? Some number or some fact. Okay. Um. So who else read this part? China's response. Who else read this part? Somebody else also read this. Uh, 
Who else, so hands up, who else read this part? Hmm? Did you read what part? You also read this part? Can you help him? Can you tell us some fact that China is giving? Some fact or some number? Foreign investment companies account for 55% of the Chinese exports. So the US gets an advantage, right? What's their, if they're undervalued, the US gets an advantage, why? 55% of exports is of the foreign companies, right? Foreign owned companies. So of the Chinese exports, for example, you have big Apple or Fox Con factory in China, right? So a large amount of the exports, uh, foreign owned company are getting we can see this uh, quote here, right? The Korean-based LG Electronics said, a weaker one means cheaper land and labor, more competitively priced China-made exports. So for example, LG is included here, okay? LG are producing <coughs> things in China and they're getting the advantage, okay? So China is stressing on that. But some other facts that we can see here, China, China argues that uh, its imports is also increasing, okay? So import is increasing 18% a year. Export is increasing more quickly, but still imports are increasing. And it has trade deficits with many countries. So although it has a trade surplus with the US, it has a trade deficit with other countries. Okay. It gives the many Asian countries. We can look in the exhibit and see. Okay. Uh, another point they make here, they're helping the US by financing the US. So do you understand financing? Financing is uh, another way to say giving a loan. Okay. Do you understand giving a loan? So they are buying all these bonds in the US, two trillion. Basically China is lending the money to the US government, okay? So then the US can, government can spend the money somewhere. So they're, they're making this kind of argument on their side that the US also gets the advantage, okay? Uh, then we have uh, lessons from China's neighbors, but uh, we the time is uh, just finished, so we'll just finish that part. Uh, we didn't have time to finish today. So, do you have any questions about what we studied today? No. Okay then. So then, uh, just we have just one part to finish, right? The appreciation of the yen and just the Asian crisis, okay? And then, so you can start to think about this kind of question, right? Next class, we're going to do the analysis and action plan. Finish and do the analysis and action plan. So you can start to think about the information and the analysis, right? So just uh, on the website, also I have put up the online, some online resources, okay, that you can use for your project. So you can find that on the when you go to the website. Yes. I'm going to say, 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 I'